digesting what the boss man said and putting out a call for Super Mick. This is Locked on A's. You are Locked on A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, did I pinch it? The only way I'm going to know, you know, is to the very end, when this is all said and done, I go back and watch the beginning and go, you did it again. Well, we'll see. Welcome to another episode of Locked on A's, your team every day, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. My name is Wayne Coy, longtime Bay Area dude, uh, went to uh, grade school and some of junior high in Oakland and moved over to San Leandro, but pretty much East Bay kid my entire life, uh, a lot of years waking up the Bay Area on the radio and now living in Las Vegas. You may notice a trend there. Anyway, want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. That's pretty cool, knowing that you roll out of bed and you're like, I got to see what Wayne's up to today. Well, we are, like all the girls I dated in high school, free and available wherever you get your podcast and, of course, on YouTube as well. Uh, of course, uh, your comments are always welcome down below on the YouTube channel right down there. Uh, and you can DM us anytime you want. We love the give and take. And if we don't, we just delete it. Okay, so today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You know, FanDuel wants to make every moment more. And right now, your $5 bet can get you $150 in bonus bets. If you're a new customer, all you got to do is get that $5 bet in FanDuel.com slash Locked on is getting ready for the big game and all the excitement that goes with it. More on that in just a few minutes. Preview Las Vegas. We mentioned it yesterday. We'll talk about it again today. If you didn't know it, the Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce had their uh, their annual to do. That's what they call it when it's a big deal to do like 1500 people show up and mostly uh, Las Vegas business people rubbing elbows, checking out the vendors and listening to what the speakers have to say. Uh, there was one speaker in particular that had my attention, and that would be Oakland Athletics owner, John Fisher, who sat down for a little Q&A with the Chamber's CEO, Mary Beth Sewall. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that it was riveting. I'm not going to tell you that there was any news. In fact, literally zero revelations out of their entire conversation, which was 15 or 20 minutes, give or take. Nothing new to report there. As a matter of fact, if there was anything to report there, uh, my gut says they weren't going to talk about it. There was no telling. So either way, even if it was one of those kind of interviews at the end, based on who's in the room and what the topic is, hey, it's MLB, it's your new baseball team. It's the guy who owns the squad. And he's coming out to say, hello, Las Vegas, and get to know you a little bit and just introduce himself and the team to the community. You would think uh, that that would be uh, well received. You would think that after they got done talking, uh, there might be a great reaction from the people that were in the room. Uh, you would think, right? The Las Vegas A's. We like the sound of that, right, Vegas? Yeah? Yes? Are we, are we alive back there, Las Vegas? How are we feeling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nervous laugh if you ever heard one. And it's also an opportunity completely squandered. Uh, and it goes a long way towards underscoring my perspective on this whole thing, which is basically from a now Las Vegas locals POV, and yes, I'm tainted because of where I come from and what my background is, but I can just tell you from having looked around, talked around, plenty of conversations in the last 10, what, 11 months since the A's announced the parallel paths were over, nobody cares. That's the bottom line. Okay, I'll just get right to it. Uh, it's Las Vegas. The enthusiasm for this particular MLB team is just not there. Uh, in case you're like, oh, well, yeah, it is. If you're one of those people, may I remind you? The Las Vegas A's. We like the sound of that, right, Vegas? Yeah? Yes? Are, are we alive back there, Las Vegas? How are we feeling? <laughs> okay. I think what's happened is basically uh, Las Vegans and Nevadans as a whole have been sort of uh, 
uh, what do you what do you call that? Like cautiously stepping into the story. OK, keeping an eye 100 percent completely on what's going on in Oakland. And it's a show, as you know. So basically nothing that resembles competence has come out of out of Oakland and the A's since this whole thing started. Well, other than the fact that they were able to get three hundred and eighty million dollars given to them uh, by the Nevada legislators that did happen. Now, the question is, are they going to get it? Because the way this thing's written, that means they have to be at the Tropicana location and whether or not they're going to be able to do that. I don't know. I think, though, that Las Vegas has figured out that along with the team, you get the BS that John Fisher and Dave Cavill uh, have basically learned how to spew from the moment I think they wake up when their eyes are open, it starts. And maybe, just maybe, they were wanting to give the ownership the benefit of the doubt. You know, new lease on life, you're up in Las Vegas, things could be different. My feeling is, and I think so far the, the story is, the leopard really doesn't change its spots. Uh, for me, as far as Southern Nevadans go and their reaction, uh, to the A's so far, I, I really do believe it's kind of like Bobby De Niro yelling at Sylvester Stallone in that movie Copland, if you ever saw that, right? It's kind of like, you had a chance to make them happy and you blew it. You blew it. Don't really do a very good De Niro, do I? But anyway, yeah, I mean, you had a great chance to make an impression at a Chamber of Commerce event, you talk about a built-in audience. These are local business people who want to be able to root for things that are great locally. And I think they've kind of figured it out. So anyway, maybe he could make it up right after the Q&A, because that didn't go so well, right? Maybe John Fisher, who is all of a sudden the spokesperson for the A's, uh, after going all those years without ever even being seen, let alone heard, now, all of a sudden, uh, he's the guy. Anyway, that's fine. Stand tall. Be resolute. Face the local media. Answer all the tough questions because you know they're going to get lobbed at you. Do it with transparency. Do it with enthusiasm. In other words, it's Vegas. It's showtime, baby. Sell it, Johnny. We know you can do it. Well, did he? How's it, how's it feel to be here in Las Vegas? And your, your thoughts with the A's coming to town, with this presentation and the, the chamber doing what they did, first of all? Uh, I mean, it feels it feels great. Um, there's a lot of people out there, and uh, having an opportunity to, to to tell our story is is really, I think, what we're all about. And um, you know, the more people we can connect with, I think, the greater the the adoption is going to be by the community, and the greater you know the success we'll have here. How quickly will we see the renderings? When are those going to be coming out? Well, you know, we, we had plans to release the renderings um, in December, um, and unfortunately, you know, the, with the tragedy that, that occurred here, we postponed that. Um, since then, we've been working with, uh, with Bally's and GLPI, who are uh, sort of two of our partners on the Tropicana site, to try and see if we can, instead of just releasing our renderings by themselves, um, be able to release our renderings along with the planned resort that is going to be on that. So that's something that we're going through and that, you know, takes time. And so uh, we'll release our renderings when, you know, when it's the right time to do so. What, you about, the, what your... about the funding for the stadium? Can you give us any report on that? Sure. Um, you know, we anticipate that the stadium will cost, you know, perhaps close to $1.5 billion. Um, that will be funded mostly with equity from uh, my family. Um, we'd actually like to, you know, consider raising capital, especially from local investors, because we think that that creates um, a, a connection to the community that has, you know, we've seen that with a lot of other teams, been a really successful thing, um, and, um, and with a little bit of debt. Is you mentioned on stage that debt? you're going to be entering the design phase. With that being said, is that referring to the renderings and that, that resort that you were just uh, mentioning before you actually released them all? Yeah, I mean, it's called schematic design, uh, and it's when the, you know, the architects uh, actually get past just the conceptual part of your planning um, to actually you know, drawing the lines, figuring out where everything is going to go, um, and making, making sure that, uh, that other than just the pretty pictures that you see, um, that this is, you know, actually going to be um, reality. Does it include so. a retractable roof? 
Um, you know, we'll find out when the renderings uh, come, come out here. <laughs> where, where will the athletics play in the interim between after this season from Oakland? Yeah. So, I mean, you guys have probably read uh, where, where we have been. Um, you, uh, I think, uh, you know, told a lot of people where we had been as well. Thank you. Um, uh, but, um, uh, and so, you know, we're looking at, at our options right now. Um, we haven't made a choice. Um, you know, we hope to do so relatively soon, but we're looking at different options. Summerlin is one of the options, I would assume? We're not going to, you know, I'm not going to be specific about where we're looking and where, and where we're not. Um, we think the ballpark in Summerlin is a, you know, a tremendous uh, asset and a great place. So, um, but we haven't actually made a choice yet. Is it still set to be at the Tropicana the... Hotel? I mean, at the Tropicana Hotel ballpark. I've heard rumors of it may be moving. Is it still set to be there? The ballpark? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, certainly. Oh, gotcha. Is it yeah. still slated to begin on schedule construction? Is there any hiccups that have come up with maybe when the initial construction can uh, we can expect it to begin? Uh, we hope so. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I've spent enough time in, in real estate to know that uh, nothing ever goes completely in a straight line. Um, uh, but, you know, we are, I think, working really well together with our partners. We have a tremendous team um, having Bjarke Ingels, uh, who we think is one of the greatest architects in the world, um, designing our stadium, working with HNTB. Uh, which is one of the great sports architecture firms and architecture firms in the world and the work that they've done in, in Vegas. Um, having uh, Mortensen McCarthy uh, as our contractors, contractors who um, have done, uh, have had a lot of success here in, in Las Vegas. Um, you know, we think we have a great team of, of people to help make this reality. John, you want to hit? There's John Fisher uh, facing the press in Las Vegas, I, I do have to give him a little bit of credit. I mean, he didn't run away, right? I mean, he hung in there with those questions. So style points, I guess, for that. Uh, the scrum uh, did not end with him lying on the floor in the fetal position, calling out for Doris, his mommy. So he gets points for that. I'll tell you what wasn't good was his inability to sort of soothe the nerves of the people there that are just kind of wondering, you know, what the heck they're getting into. I mean, especially, I would think, not just the residents, but the Nevada lawmakers, the ones who said yes and are now seeing a bit of a mess. Where's it all end up at? That They've got to be thinking about that. More on Mr. Fisher in just a minute. I didn't say more on. I said, well, I guess I did, but I didn't mean it that way. Uh, FanDuel, got to tell you about what's up with them. It is NFL playoff time. And, of course, we're watching the championship games this weekend, then we'll have a week off, and then uh, the Super Bowl, live from our city here in Allegiant Stadium. So that's all going to be cool, and you need to be a part of it as each moment goes by. Why don't you start now? It'd be a great time to get involved with FanDuel. They're making it pretty easy for you. First of all, very easy to download the app. You get it on your phone, on your tablet, wherever it is. And then uh, have some fun. Get into the, the prop bets, get into the parlays and all of that. And they're making it more easy than ever for you to get involved. A $5 bet for a first-time customer. And uh, you win there, you get $150 in bonus bets. Yours to use however you want to. And you couldn't think of a better time, probably right as you get ready for the big game. That's happening. And FanDuel wants you to be a part of it. So why don't you take advantage? All you got to do is go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Do that and then make your first bet a touchdown with FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. John Fisher facing the music, so to speak. It, somebody called me out on that. They said, well, you know, how's he facing the music? And I said, well, he's answering reporters' questions. That's called facing the music. It's really not too difficult. <clears throat> anyway, for anybody who thinks that John Fisher is not having a hard time getting people to kind of buy what he is selling regarding his whole financial situation, a lot of questions about that, and especially the delta between the $380 million in public funds that they're getting from Nevada. And then you just heard him say $1.5 billion is what they're saying that the stadium's going to cost now. I remember them saying that already like two years ago. Do you really think that a $1.5 billion stadium 
in 2022 cost the same as a $1.5 billion stadium in 2024? No, because it's now probably a two plus billion dollar stadium and it's only going to get more expensive. So, yeah, there's a need to have the money. And the question is, can they handle the bag? And if you believe Mr. Fisher, yes, his family's got it all covered. Uh, oh, and by the way, he'd like to extend a wonderful uh, invitation slash offer to any uh, Las Vegas muckety mucks that might be interested in owning a piece of, of uh, Major League Baseball team. Okay, you heard him float that the possibility of taking on local investors. Now, remember when that whole thing came up in Oakland and that was a, a non-starter, there was no way that was going to happen, right? Well, I think that as far as the people are going, uh, people in Nevada are concerned and how it's going for them and how they're taking it all, I, I really believe that they uh, aren't stupid, okay? And they smell a sinking ship just to, as good as anybody that hasn't even officially, by the way, left the port of Oakland. But there's definitely some mayday, mayday, mayday going on. You can't hide that. Danger Will Robinson, however you want to put it. I've heard it. It's there. It's real, no matter what you think. So what is the signature move for the Oakland A's when they get called out on their ineptitude and they drop another deuce for us all to see and smell? What do they do? Hmm. I know. This is a job for Super Mick. You know Super Mick. Faster than a bullet train from Victorville. More powerful and more for the record than Jeremy Aguero. Able to try and make you believe we can fit a retractable roof stadium on a nine-acre plot and obscure every single view with a, a brand new tower. We can do all of that. It is super Mick. Look up in the sky. It's a paid-off turd. It's, it's a spin doctor. Why, it's super Mick. Yes, it's super Mick. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Las Vegas with no powers, no abilities, or journalistic integrity. Super Mick, defender of John Fisher, Steve Hill and Rob Manfraud, champion of whatever it is that Dave Cavill needs done, self-serving, spineless, lapdogging, working against the forces of a thing called reality, who disguised as Mick Akers, mild-mannered reporter for a once great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for bullcrap, untruths, and access to all of these really cool people until they don't need you anymore, Mick. Speaking of Mr. Akers, uh, you may have seen his article that ran uh, right after uh, John Fisher did. Oh, did you miss the it? The Las what Vegas happened. A's. We like the sound of that, right, Vegas? Yeah? Yes? Are, are we alive back there, Las Vegas? How are we feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's the way the room felt. You could have heard a pin drop in there, okay? There were no excited Chamber of Commerce types hanging out at the Chamber of Commerce event, excited that the Oakland A's were maybe going to become the Las Vegas A's. You'd think they'd be all over themselves happy about that, and we would have gotten just a big round of applause, maybe even a standing O. Well, it didn't happen. So that's negative news because it gets reported like I just did just now, like other people did in the last two days. It gets reported and when it does, that's when you see Mr. Mr. Akers, uh, who works for the Las Vegas Re Review Journal. He is a journalist degreed, yes. Uh, and his job it seems is that whenever there is some news like that, to quickly get out a piece that takes whatever the story is and spins it the other way or just takes your attention completely off of that so we can talk about this. Somebody said to me, why are you so tough on him? And I'm, I'm saying because you never hear what I'm saying reported in this way by the local newspaper, ever. Doesn't matter that the rest of the world, all of the national media, most of the regional media, and even a lot of the local media, uh, are, who, by the way, some are starting to already figure it out, and you can tell by their reporting, they're all reporting. They're all kind of 
telling you the same thing because we're not stupid and we have eyes and ears. But if you read the review journal, it's like a whole nother world that where those kinds of things just don't exist. So instead, what we do is we read a story all about how Mr. Akers reached out to the mayor's office in Oakland on Monday. So prior to the chamber, give him credit. He reached out ahead of time, I'm sure, so that he could have some quotes if he needed them. And it turns out he really did. But he reached out to the mayor's office and... Um, the big headline was uh, about how Mayor Sheng Tao's office says the athletics won't be missed when they leave the Bay Area ahead of the team's Las Vegas relocation. That's the headline story. Review, Review Journal reached out to the office this week to ask if the city and the A's have discussed extending the team's Oakland Coliseum lease, you know, past its expiration date, which is 2024. Lee Hansen, remember that. Lee Hansen, she is the chief of staff uh, in the mayor's office, said no, and then via email, return email, ripped into the club. Those are not my words. Those are mixed words. Ripped into the club. Quote, to my great shock, the A's have once again failed to provide anyone in Oakland clarity on their genius business plans. Hansen said Monday via email. Uh, to date, they have not contacted or requested an extension to their lease from the mayor, from Alameda County, the Joint Powers Agency that oversees the Coliseum complex, and perhaps most importantly, from the fans. Believe me, we could, we would, but anyway. Hansen claimed that A's games at the Coliseum, which is owned equally by the A's and by the city, are not profitable for Oakland. Quote, Luckily, we make more money with one exhibition soccer game at the Coliseum than we do throughout the entire A's season. End quote. Now, I will say I don't think that's true. But anyway, Hansen finished by saying, quote, so they won't be missed. Now, if you read Mick's article, the they in question is the A's as a whole, in general, the team, the people who work for the team. The Bat Boys, uh, the people who do the laundry, all of that, that the whole entire organization won't be missed. A's owner John Fisher says he was not surprised to hear such sentiment since the team is set to leave the city. The club could move as soon as the end of the 2024 season. Quote, this is Fisher now. I understand the disappointment that the Bay Area fans have for the team leaving, and I understand the disappointment that the mayor has. Stop. Bold. That the mayor has. That wasn't a quote from the mayor. Okay? Now, if John Fisher got confused, that's fine, I guess. But Mick's the one who got the quote in the first place. So... Wouldn't you think since he's getting the quote from Fisher and he got the quote from Hansen, that if indeed there was a confusion over who said it, who was expressing themselves, that the reporter would say, uh, Mr. Fisher, no, it wasn't actually the mayor. It wasn't Mayor Sheng Tao. It was Lee Hansen who said that. Or maybe there was no conversation. Maybe he just let it roll and then to take it one step further, printed it. So that you, the reader, could say, that's unbelievable that the mayor of Oakland would say that. Because if you read this, how do you come away with any other conclusion? A's owner John Fisher, not surprised to hear statements like that. I understand that the mayor leading a great city like Oakland, I am not surprised by her comments. The mayor's comments. Now, to be fair... Lee Hansen, also a her. That's the proper pronoun. I uh, don't think that he went that deep. I really don't. And if you do, you're just trying to dress it up, too. That's the way I take it, okay? Uh, we've done everything we could to try and make things work and ultimately concluded that it was not going to work for us in Oakland, but even more, the opportunity for us in Las Vegas was a tremendous opportunity, and it's something that we really wanted to embrace. So you have the headline saying basically that the A's 
uh, uh, are not wanted in the city of Oakland by the mayor's office. Then you have a quote that leads you to believe that the mayor actually said that. Now, I think that the soccer game thing was probably a stretch, but sounds to me like somebody was a little upset there, but it wasn't the mayor. But if you read the article, you probably come away feeling like it must have been, or it had to have been. So then Mick went on to uh, X Twitter and uh, basically started putting out fires on his own. If you believe that, I have some swampland right over there off Charleston I'd like to sell you. Okay. He went into rumor squashing mode quickly on Twitter, and he said, the A's are not in discussions with the Rio or the festival grounds and their owner, Phil Ruffin. Uh, he got from the, the folks at the Rio, the new owners there, uh, basically a statement from them saying that even though they made a great offer to the A's, uh, and they, they still think it would be a great place for baseball or football or other sports, um, that the A's weren't interested, okay? And that they were indeed locked on your team every day. <laughs> they were locked on the trop site and that they were working with Bally's and with GLPI. And why would they do that? Well, I can give you about 380 million reasons why. But since Mick Akers won't ask John Fisher the questions that need to be answered, I think I need to do that. So here's the thing I'm telling you right now in our next episode, I'm just going to lay it out there. Um, call it an old Western if you want. Play the good, the bad, and the ugly theme behind me if you feel like you need to. But I, I'm seriously going to call the, the A's ownership out to the middle of the street and share some of my frustrations and direct questions that will hopefully uh, get answered. And that's just it. Will they? I wouldn't hold your breath. But... I got to ask them, so we will on our next episode. And of course, then the question is for A's fans, you know, after all of this, now what? What? Now what? What are we going to do? Well, if you're the A's fans, you're going to have Fans Fest, which is devoted to Oakland sports, period. Uh, specifically, the A's, no. Uh, we got a soccer team to celebrate. So it's about, uh, it's about the roots. It's about uh, the soul. It's about, sure, whoever's in Oakland. And there still is a baseball team there, last I checked. So uh, what kind of work are they doing? Pretty good work. With zero input from the team, I should tell you. Uh, Chris Davis, Ben Grieve, Mike Norris, Billy North, uh, Trevor May, and uh, just today announced Grant Balfour. Yes. All going to be in, in attendance to celebrate uh, with the, the fans of Oakland. So that's very cool. Oakland Ballers are in town. You're going to see some support for them, too. Save the date. It's February 24th. Uh, location is Block 15, 252 2nd Street, Oakland. And, uh, yeah, they're going to have a party the way it should be done, with or without the team's blessings, right? So we'll ask the hard, hard questions, uh, not just for John Fisher, but for you, too. I got some questions for you as an A's fan, and we'll get into all of that in our next episode. Just uh, just be ready. I want you to answer the questions. I don't want you to just listen to them. I want you to hear them, think about it, and answer them. In fact, if you have anything you want to say about today's episode, by all means, comment section. In fact, we'd totally appreciate it if you do that. Give us a thumbs up if you can. That helps spread the channel. Subscribe, of course, so you know when we're here again the next time. And we want you to know, too, Locked On Sports Today is next. If you just stay where you're at on YouTube, we're going to send you over there with the greatest 24-7, 365 streaming sports coverage. Can't find it anywhere else. Locked on sports today. We'll go there next. And until next time, I'm Wayne Coy reminding you to keep on swinging.